Thank you, Dustin. Welcome out to Dozer Park. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday night. We got a whole lot going on here at the ballpark. A lot of guests around the ballpark as well, getting ready to open this series against the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. I've got a couple of guests down here joining me on the pregame show. The first of those, Kay Rogers, who is a donor dad with Gift of Hope. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being out here tonight. I know you guys have got a large group out here tonight. You're ready to have some fun. You got some people out there playing catch pregame, and uh, we've got a little surprise with Homer when he's out here. So you guys are looking to have some fun out here tonight, aren't you? We've been having a blast so far. That's great. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got involved with, with Gift of Hope and uh, their mission to enhance and, and save lives. So in June uh, 2010, it was on Father's Day, uh, our son Nicholas uh, passed away unexpectedly. He uh, suffered an asthma attack and, and we couldn't save him. Um, because of that, uh, when we were in the hospital, we all made the decision that uh, we wanted to donate his organs. We felt it was the right thing to do and, and that was something he would have wanted to do. Um, so we did that, and because of that donation, he was able to, you know, help uh, four people uh, with the gift of life. And uh, I also got involved with the gift of hope to kind of spread that message and the importance of organ donation. There's an extensive list here too of uh, the four people that were saved. You want to run through that, and and I know we've I've got them listed right here, but uh, it, it's a pretty uh, pretty big range of age of ages uh, whose lives that he helped save. Absolutely, it's amazing how much and uh, how diverse it can help people. Uh, uh, an 11 year old boy received my son's liver, a 14 year old boy received my son's heart, a 34 year old man received my son's right kidney and pancreas, and a 50 year old woman received my son's left kidney. Wow, that's, that's impressive right there, and uh, absolutely well deserved right there, and, uh, and, it, and it can help everybody. I mean, that's, that's the big key about it. I know a lot of the information that you guys are spreading today and getting people to sign up, that's part of the thing today. Jason just mentioned you guys have got a table behind home plate, and you'll sign, they'll sign people up here tonight. Absolutely. You can sign up here tonight, and there's several other different ways. If you, you can uh, sign up at the uh, Secretary of State office, or you can go online and sign up that way as well. I know you mentioned uh, increasing awareness. How do you guys do that? You're, you're a donor dad, uh, and, and your family made that decision. How do you go out now, events like this, I know, of course, but to increase awareness and let people know this is what organ and tissue donation can do? So what we basically do is we'll, we talk to everybody that we can. No audience is too large or too small, and we share our story, uh, hopefully so people can understand and maybe the next story they hear is about how somebody got saved. Events like this uh, really help spread the word, and, and you guys do, as you mentioned, small, large. This, this is the kind of a big event, a few thousand people that you get to talk in front of and, and be part of our social media. You can do it with small events, but th those kind of events, how do these help? These kind of events that, that you guys are doing and, and spreading the word. So it gives us an opportunity to discuss organ donation and maybe some people who, who are really unaware of, of the activities of organ donation and how it works and, and how it can really help people and save lives. It truly is the gift of life. I know we're going to see a, a couple of other uh, specific stories that touch. Uh, our own general manager, Jason Mott, has, a, has one, and we're going to see that video coming up here in a little bit. But how, uh, with, with that and being able to use a personal story like you just told here, uh, when you're in front of people, how does that help you to get that message across? For me, it's a little bit selfish. I never want to miss an opportunity to talk about my son or remember him. Of course, we all miss him dearly. Um, but I, I think it's important to me to let people know that even in the darkest of times, you know, there can be that little bit of glimmer of hope. And in this particular case, that hope came from the gift of life we provided through organ donation. The, the message that you're able to convey to everybody here in the future, if, if they're on the, uh, I guess, on the fence about saying yes to donation, whether it's for themselves, it's for a family member, and what would that final message that, that you have be to those people who are trying to make that decision? Because it's not an easy decision to make. No, it's not. It's actually a very personal and difficult decision. I think the, the conversation surrounding death is uncomfortable for everybody, but it is going to happen at some point for all of us in one way or another. So I would encourage everybody to sign up to be organ donors because you never know whose lives you could save. You know, uh, I always encourage it because I love to see the stories about where the children are saved. We've got, you guys have got a lot with Gift of Hope out here tonight, and uh, what did I hear when you guys are coming down? we got a play ball kid coming up. we got, what do we got, a first pitch? What else we got going on? Well, I brought my grandkids, my wife and my son and, and his wife are here with me, so I think my grandson's going to be able to play, or say, play ball, and then I'm going to have the grandkids go up with me to do some announcing. we got the play on the field, so we're just making some lasting family memories. And then we've got the table behind home plate, people that want to sign up. I know we got cup holders in every seat with some information in there, so all the fans that are here tonight, please take a look at that pamphlet and the cup holders uh, with all of that. And, and then stop by the table, Gift of Hope's got behind home plate where you can get more information. They've got some goodies, too, and uh, 
just like Kay is down here, they are all uh, willing to share their stories and talk to you as well. And uh, we'll have some videos coming up as, as well. Did I miss anything? Well, you guys have got a lot going on here tonight. No, I think you touched base on everything. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for everything. Gift of Hope is, is done with the Peoria Chiefs. We appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Kay Rogers, our donor dad. I will keep the microphone as well. Thank you very much. As we mentioned, we've got a huge night out here tonight. Thanks to Kay, uh, his family, and all of Gift of Hope for being here, part of the evening with us. And uh, one of the other events we've got going on here tonight is Bradley Night. We had the Kaboom Bobblehead giveaway for the first thousand fans. A 13 and over came through the gates. Hopefully you enjoyed those. And now I'm joined by uh, the baseball coach for Bradley Elvis Dominguez. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. It's great to be here. What a great, it's a great time to be playing baseball. Huh? Fantastic. Great and uh, you know, it, we were I'm sure the fans enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. We finally uh, not under. We were finally got under 100 degrees. <laughs> All that uh, kind of nasty weather that came through the last two weeks. Uh, we joked about it in the dugout. Bradley Knight. This has been on the schedule with us for months and months and months. Wisconsin, I think, is the only team that could have been here for Bradley Knight that comes with one of your players. Not only that, but he's the starting pitcher tonight because they got rained out four days ago. Uh, so just complete coincidences all around, but you get to see one of your former guys pitch here against us tonight. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's, it's a great thrill, not only for myself, but uh, you know, I've been following Cameron. He pitched for us two years ago, was really instrumental in our, uh, our regional berth. And uh, you know, he's having a great career. He's one of seven guys that we got playing pro ball right now. So. Uh, you know, it's really, I'm really excited for him. I hope he has a good outing tonight. And then after he leaves, then hopefully the Chiefs win, right? So well, he, that'd be kind of, he, he, he has a good outing and then the Chiefs win and, and you're happy on both, both, on both sides. There you go. Yeah, I was going to say, that's that split loyalty. It's, it's one of those things you joke when you, if you, you're a parent and you've got kids on both teams and you see those split jerseys. And that, that's kind of how you are today. You got you got the split Peoria Chiefs Wisconsin Timber Rattlers jersey. I, absolutely, absolutely. I, I sure hope for a Chiefs win, but at the same time, I hope he does have a great honor. You mentioned seven guys that uh, that have played for you that are in pro ball, and we've seen uh, a major league call up this year. Jason Lebelbijan in a Triple A All Star game. Uh, Cam's had a beat us earlier in the year up at their place in April, so he's already got one uh, one win over the Chiefs under his belt this year. You guys have had a lot of success that kind of stems off of that big regional run you had two years ago. It, we do, and I mean Matt Dennis is having a great year. Mike Talkman just got called up to the big leagues. Uh, Rob Scahill's with the Brewers, um, and you mentioned. Um, Max Murphy's also there yeah. as well. We just had two guys released, but uh, you know what? That, that says a lot about our program and uh, the kind of players we are producing, and I'm really happy for all of them. They really got to achieve their dreams, not only getting a great education, but at the same time getting a chance to live their lifelong dream. Well, Max did enough damage against us the year he was, <laughs> was on Cedar Rapids in the, uh, the Midwest League, so uh, another, uh, another former Bradley player who got to play here and had some success here uh, playing against us, which uh, I know for you, again, it was nice to see. Uh, anytime anyone, anyone that, that used to wear a Bradley shirt or uniform has an opportunity to move up and, and represent not only our school but our town and our university and, and at the same time their families, I think is a great tribute to, uh, to what we're trying to do. The, uh, the conference has gotten some uh, big pub over the last few weeks and part of that's with the Cardinals and a former chief Paul DeYoung from Illinois State. I know you saw, uh, saw him going against them a couple years trying to get him out and, uh, and then saw him play here for us and now, wow, what a month he's had in, uh, in St. Louis. When you can put your name next to what Albert Pujols and some of those guys in your first 50 games in a Cardinals uniform, you're doing something right. And I'm not going to ask if you expected this out of Paul because I don't think anybody really did except for maybe uh, Paul. But what do you think about a guy coming out of the Missouri Valley and having the success he's having right now? Well, this is great. It just, it just goes to show you, Nathan, that uh, you know baseball, it doesn't matter the size or the ability. It's just the work ethic. And he really is a workaholic. And I'm just so happy for him. And now looking back, I was sure as heck wish he would have played for me right. instead of the, the other school down the road. But you know what? He uh, He's having a heck of a time, and, and it's, I, I couldn't be happier for him. I got a chance to meet with him and uh, spend some time with him when he was down here. Uh, and it's just great for our league. I mean, not only him, but so many others have actually moved up and are playing in the big leagues right now. It says a lot about the Missouri Valley. Summertime, I know you guys have got some guys out doing work and playing in some of the wood bat leagues and the college prospects leagues and all that, but what's it like for you guys at this part of the summer getting ready for school to start in less than a month now and uh, ready to get guys back on campus and some fall ball? Well, I tell you what, it's, it's really a stressful time because we, you know, just like anybody else in the country with baseball, you never know about the draft. It could very easily sign pro contracts after we sign them in November. So. Uh, this past year we were lucky enough last year we lost three guys that were incoming uh, that we'd never set foot on campus so 
Uh, we're really excited about this group, and hopefully they can stay healthy. And they've had uh, tremendous summers playing all over the country. I guess in Alaska, all the way up to the Cape Cod League. So um, they're starting to trickle back now, but uh, I couldn't be happier for them. And that, that again, uh, what they've been able to do over the summer. We've got Kaboom ready to throw out a first pitch. Did you give him any tips? Yeah, throw strikes. Throw strikes. Yeah. Well, he's only got to throw one. Well, so he's got a got a one and zero shot. Th throw one strike. That'd are, be kind of good. Are you recruiting him? You're, no, you're, you're not recruiting no. Kaboom. I, have no? you seen his throwing ability? I have not. Oh, good, and you don't want to. You see don't want to see. No. Well, we're all going to see it here in a few minutes. So no pressure, Kaboom. You better throw a strike. Oh, no, he's, yeah. See, he's now he's nervous. So we're we're good. But we'll see how that goes. Elvis. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so us. much for your time. Appreciate it. Bradley University night as we get ready for everything this evening. Go up and buy tennis balls on our pitch in for a charity at the Humana table. Raise some money for the Friendship House. We got post-game fireworks coming your way. Big night. Thanks for being part of it. And we'll be back here again with another fireworks show tomorrow. We appreciate you spending your Saturday here at Dozer Park.